Yes, yes, yes. What's going on, family? What is going on, guys? Welcome, welcome, welcome to today's session with your boy Abel. Super excited to be here with every single one of you guys, as usual, because we are back with another live Asian session stream, giving you guys value, giving you guys sauce, giving you guys some information that can ultimately, hopefully, help you out, guys, in your in your trading careers as a whole right because one thing that i know about trading family is that this is definitely a learning process right it's like learning an entirely new language and just like with learning any time a new language there is a learning curve that is attached with it but the thing about trading just like learning how to speak a new language is absolutely very possible to actually do it right it's just about putting in enough time putting in enough effort to actually see the results that you're actually looking for family so go ahead and uh, drop your locations in the chat family because like i said we are live right now and we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the market see what the see what's been going on over the past 24 hours if anything new has pretty much happened and uh yeah then we're gonna go from there um just like i mentioned though guys overall um it's been a very choppy choppy week but let's go ahead and take a look at the economic calendar uh just to look over what was actually released today so we did have uh, GDP numbers for the euro, German GDP. But again, just like what we experienced with U.S. GDP as well, it was pretty much more so just a revision of last GDP's numbers, right? Because we actually ended up getting our first release of GDP. I actually just, you know, figured out today, guys, that there's actually three different releases that are actually or three versions of GDP that gets released right a month apart from each other right there's the advanced the second release and then the final so right now we just got the second release of the second quarter gdp numbers and with that revision we actually seen gdp technically get a little bit better right uh, but overall still negative you know okay so last month guys it was forecasted gdp came out at zero point negative eight well yeah negative point eight percent it just got revised to negative 0.6 percent so overall we're still negative gdp overall uh, but that's pretty much what the revision just came out as, as as today and now again next month the final numbers will actually be released on gdp numbers for quarter two right so that's just the one thing guys because i got a ton of questions today a ton of people hit me up all over social media right and i love it i love when you guys reach out to me on social media guys whether it's instagram or any other platform trust me i do love it i encourage you guys to do it if i do not respond back right away please 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 be hesitant to uh do not hesitate to actually continue to bother hell out of me because uh, that's the whole point of my job right is to be there uh to be able to help you guys and guide you guys throughout this entire process right and that's something that i truly enjoy doing absolutely right 
But overall, I did get a lot of questions from you guys, right? Like a shit ton over the past couple days uh, relating to this GDP, right? Because we all know that GDP is definitely one of the top tier data releases, guys, that traders, investors across the world, you know, they pay attention to, right? Because GDP itself, which stands for the gross domestic product, right? This pretty much in simple terms, right? In simple terms, this shows us how our economy is actually growing, right? If we're, our economy is growing or if it is not growing, right? Is our economy expanding, growing, or is it contracting, slowing down, right? GDP is what it actually measures that, okay? So that's why it's definitely a very, very important indicator that is utilized across the board to make decisions in the market right this is definitely one of those type of releases guys that creates sentiment and as we should be aware of for all my ogs that have been on the calls you know ever since i started doing these live sessions consistently right three four months ago you guys know that sen sentiment is really what drives the overall market right whatever the general sentiment is around the markets as a whole is going to cause emotional or even logical decisions across the board which is going to influence price so yeah it's very important guys right but again this is literally just a revision now um the one thing that could really cause the revision guys to really really shake the markets if it's just revised and it's just a major major miss from what was originally released okay that's like the one time that you can expect this to yeah bring massive mass now again you always want to be careful because it is gdp but that that's the, that's what we should have that's the one scenario that we can expect massive massive volatility to enter the market right like if this was actually revised and it came out positive then yeah that itself is going to really really shake the markets but it didn't do nothing right it just revised you know 0.2 percent um better you could say right but overall still negative okay but that's the one release, guys. Again, I was pretty much got a literally so many questions on. But that's pretty much what it was, right? And that's also why we really didn't see too much of a reaction today, guys, even off of the release. Because, again, it's only the revision. And the revision wasn't too far off from what the actual numbers came out as last month. All right. Now, the other thing, guys, we did have initial jobless claims as well that also got released. Now, again, employment, guys, is something that we also want to be paying attention to. You know, anything to do with uh, a job indicator, right? Job market indicator, like U.S. initial jobless claims. You definitely want to be paying attention to a lot more now. Uh, just because, again, this is that one thing, right? Like that one shiny hope that the Federal Reserve is pretty much relying on, right? The fact that we do have low unemployment right now, the Fed is really relying on that to pretty much try to keep us out of a quote-unquote crazy crazy recession right i don't care what the news says guys we have been in a recession since july um and i don't care how they try to define it right it is here you know uh, uh, and, and that's just what it is so we need to be aware of these things and we need to be you know able to uh, react and adjust and things like this right here u.s initial jobless claims uh jobless claims is an indicator guys that is utilized to create sentiment as well right now overall i've been telling you guys that we should start to experience you know this number just continue to increase uh because this right here guys pretty much measures the number of individuals who filed for unemployment for the first time right and w this gets released every single week but i i expect this number to again eventually continue to actually increase you know like literally continue to actually start an increase in the market just like if we look at this chart right here guys right initial jobless claims last time we had like a massive massive spike was obviously because of you know covid right where we seen massive massive layoffs and just a lot of people were just you know unemployed and all that now i'm not saying we're going to get something drastic like this but i do believe we are going to start to see again you know higher higher um unemployment numbers or uh start to come out right so that's just something to be aware of guys you know it's just something you know that again the fed is really relying on so it's something that we should be aware of as well all right because if we see again a major downturn in or you know if the unemployment rate starts to go higher and higher and higher then yeah you know the fed is going to have to react and that's going to absolutely go ahead and shake these markets right so that's just something to really think about guys but that's overall what we're looking at for the markets from a uh fundamental perspective based on the actual calendar or at least the events that we had for today 
all right overall nothing too crazy like i said it's been a very choppy choppy week overall you know so i'm not sure how your guys's week has been but uh let me let me know in the chat guys right how has your guys's week been so far right how has your guys's week been so far has it been good has it been bad have you been on the sidelines right go ahead and let me know guys how your guys's week has been because mine has definitely been uh very choppy right just like these markets right very very choppy just like these markets you know i definitely been just um more patient just chilling on the sidelines a lot just really seeing what the market eventually wants to do um i do have some long-term positions that i eventually entered that i'm just gonna sit on but overall it's been a very very choppy choppy week uh for me overall right so <laughs> Uh, it's just the market conditions that we have right i mean let's take a look at the dollar itself guys right and we could see like this thing really hasn't been doing much right let's go straight to the you know the actual daily time frame right so literally we've seen this massive run up in the market and then ever since then we had just straight four days now of just straight nothing right four days of just straight sideways price action uh, a lot of choppiness especially if you go to a lower time frame you know you can start to see how choppy this thing really starts to be um the only thing that i can notice out of this choppiness that we have been experiencing because again you know my blueprint guys to start the week was what right you guys remember what my blueprint was right my blueprint to start the week was to look for you know a uh, correction in this market before we eventually rebound and go higher right you know so my blueprint was to actually go lower and i still think that it is very possible for that to actually occur you know the thing that i do like is that we are seeing you know some type of you know momentum is push but the also the downfall that as well is that every time we did see a push it immediately immediately got rebounded right and this is what i was telling you guys about the the you know dollar strength as a whole right yeah i, I would love to see the dollar you know uh go ahead and maybe correct a little bit more right i would love to see it, especially down to these levels that would be super attractive around these 107 levels right to then go ahead and find a lot of demand to go higher that would be key um but just looking at how price is reacting right and this is what we're talking about guys with getting good at reading price action right just seeing how price is reacting around key levels right and seeing how price is reacting after moves that are already considered strong moves because of these big candles and seeing that these strong moves went nowhere and now if we look at something like the MACD, we are starting to see momentum slow down, right? Because we're starting to see this thing go lower. So just things like that is leading to me start to lead uh, towards more of a possible bull run again, right here for the dollar. Now, again, I could be wrong, right? And the market could very well actually continue, you know, a little bit lower, right? That's very possible. But just based off price action, based off how the market is reacting, um, it's definitely seeming like this thing actually might want to go ahead and uh, potentially rebound right back on up to the upside. And that could actually make sense, right? Because, again, yeah, the GDP numbers actually did come out today, right? They did. You know, the revision at least. Now, even that revision itself, again, it was still not good numbers, right? So that can also cause some type of fear that can really send this market right back into its you know bullish momentum that we've pretty much been experiencing so that's just something to keep in mind guys here for the dollar um we have been just very very choppy overall this entire week um but we're at a point now where yeah the market can literally and when i say literally i'm talking about literally right the market can literally go right back into this bull trend and we just continue you know dollar dominance like we have been literally since i mean look at this right i mean this entire year all of past last year as well right so you know it's very easy for this market guys to actually go ahead and start going bullish you know you have to be able to learn how to read price action around certain levels right to really identify uh what is potentially happening so what i think and what i'm looking for guys right my main objective for the dollar itself is again just seeing how we how we react around these levels um if we are going to continue in this little bearish tone right then i think the next area that we probably would see a reaction will be from up here at these levels right the 109 level uh, but again you gotta just be very careful you know because price runs this level right here instead we're just going to go ahead and you know start pushing much higher you know overall guys so 
Um, but yeah, you know, again, we're at a very interesting level here for the dollar, guys. I'm very patient. I've been very patient this entire week. And um, that's probably how I'm going to probably end up finishing the week, right? Just acting, you know, just being very patient and just waiting to see what this thing actually ends up deciding, right? Um, I was actually telling this to uh, a few people the other day, right, about how my, my trading style adjusts, right? It, my, trade, my trading style, guys, and uh, how long I hold positions, it really does adjust based on market conditions overall, right? And this is something that I want you guys to really be aware of. You know, because there's going to be a lot of times, guys, where, you know, your strategy is working for, say, a few weeks and you're hitting, right? Every trade is winning. But then right after that, market conditions change. You're not thinking about these changes. And now you start going through a massive losing streak, right? And eventually end up blowing your account. That actually happens a lot, right? Where these market conditions, guys, they do change on and off. So your ability to adjust and adapt to the ever-changing market conditions is definitely going to play a major role in you actually succeeding and fighting through this market that you have right so be aware of that guys right write that down right be aware and be able to adjust adapt and adjust to changing market conditions market is going to be super trendy one day or it could be super trendy for a week straight and then it could be super super choppy right but then there could also be times guys where the market is super super choppy but the choppiness is contained within a, you know, a large range, right? And then you're able to really still, you know, adjust and play your, you know, your strategy. But then there's going to be times where the market is, you know, uh, super choppy, but it's stuck inside of a much tighter range, right? Where obviously at that point, you know, if you're if you're a, a swing trader, you're probably going to get annoyed, right? Dealing with such, you know, tight swings in the market, right? So again, a lot of these things, guys, are things that most traders are not aware of. The fact that the market conditions do change and a lot of traders are just not able to adjust. OK, I say all that to say for me, I'm normally a swing trash day trader is what I'll consider myself. Right. A swing slash day trader. But when we have market conditions like this, right, where we're now experiencing just this choppiness and we have been uh, pretty much this entire week, you have to be able to catch on to that and adjust. Right. So now. I'm still catching some day trades if it's there, but more not more so now it's just more so some quick scalps that I'm grabbing, right? I'm getting in and out, right? I'm getting in and out. I'm grabbing 15, 20, 30 pips. I'm securing the bag and then I'm waiting for the next opportunity. Why? Because again, these markets are now showing me and they're telling me that it is very, very choppy. And when we have choppy conditions, right, it's best to go ahead and just get in and out, right? Play it safe. Play it safe. Right, it's pretty much just like you know, uh, for an example, right? Let's say we're on an airplane, right? And we're on an airplane, you know, when we're smooth sailing, there's no turbulence, no nothing, right? Everything is good to go. But once that turbulence kicks in, you best believe you're throwing that seatbelt on, right? That's the same concept, right? When we have these choppy conditions, my seatbelt is just me changing, adjusting, and just getting in and out of the markets very quickly, not trying to hold it for long, not trying to expect no breakouts. I'm just getting in and out of the range when we're getting to the top or the low or the range, right? That's my seatbelt. That's my that's my safety, you know, my safety belt that I utilize. So really keep that in mind, guys, right? It is very, very important to be aware of that. All right, now look at me. I ain't even give you guys your shout outs today, family. I went straight into the valley. So let me go ahead and give you guys all of your, your, your locational shout outs as well. Because I do appreciate every single one of you guys rocking with me tonight. We got Las Vegas in the building. Colombo, Sri Lanka in the house. We got Phoenix in, this, in, the, in the house. We got Trinidad and Tobago. Chicago, Savage Land. What's up? What's up? Jamaica, Melbourne, Australia. We got DC in the building. ATL, Palm Bay. We got Miami Gardens. What's going on? Right? We got Chicago, Dallas, Chicago. What's up? What's up? Brooklyn. I see you guys. Right, shout out to every single one of you guys that's tuning in today. I do appreciate every single one of y'all. I see we got Switzerland in the building, Augusta, Georgia, Detroit, Michigan. Stand up. I appreciate y'all. Now let me go ahead and catch up with these comments as well. Right. So I asked, how was your guys' trading week? You know, it said been good, 50-50, good, but I had a terrible Monday though. Came back strong. Let's get it, Tony. I like to hear that. Choppy and watching. Took two losses today and stopped. Okay, that's good though. You know, self discipline is is very very important. Knowing when to stop is very very important. All right? See, fifty fifty still holding positions. Been on GJ buys long term positions. Entered around one sixty one. Let's get it, Sean. I love to see it. 
stop loss and profit okay so i love that i love to hear that as well right let's see powell's talk tomorrow could swing it anyway right yeah so again you know they do have i think did it start today yeah i think it did it might start tomorrow right uh, but yeah the jackson hole symporium guys is, is actually coming up too right that's something that again we do have to be aware of uh because jerome powell is going to be speaking and anytime Jerome's, jerome powell opens his mouth relating to what's happening right now you know the markets do react right the markets do move right so based on you know whatever he does says uh what based on whatever he ends up saying all right it could definitely go ahead and influence these markets right because a lot of traders and investors guys what they're going to be doing is they're going to try to create sentiment based off his words right literally based off anything that jerome powell says right so if he's very optimistic if he's ex if he's ex you know uh, showing signs of hope things like that the NACA brings some type of optimism to traders and investors as well and because of that optimism overall we can see a potential rally in the indice market right we can see a rally in the equities markets right we can see the dollar start to lose value if jerome powell is now talking very optimistic very hopeful right if he's trying to uplift confidence then yeah the market is going to react in a very positive manner the equity markets are going to react in a very positive manner but that's going to weaken the u.s dollar as a whole so um definitely whatever he says is going to impact the markets for sure right it just it is what it is you know he holds such a very strong power you know he has uh pretty much the money printer uh at demand he is the guy that makes the decisions so yeah whenever he speaks guys it does actually influence these markets for sure right but i'm actually trying to see if i could find that actually uh, because i want to see exactly like if there's a time because this is going to be probably what everybody's going to be paying attention to tomorrow for sure all right so let's see jackson whole symposium so symposium so it starts at 9 a.m eastern standard time so early in the morning right before obviously market open so guys again be very very mindful of this this is going to be probably a very volatile event so if you are going to be trading in the morning please be very careful about it you know one thing that um should i go live tomorrow morning with you guys trading it let me think about it let me think about it right matter of fact yeah i might actually end up going live with you guys tomorrow and uh we can actually just watch it together now i'm not saying we're necessarily going to take trades if the opportunity shows itself and is there is there we're going to take it for sure right but the whole idea for tomorrow is the more so just really see what's being said right and try to figure out sentiment for long-term direction right that's really really what these these uh meetings and these these speeches and these events are really for for us traders you know our job is not to necessarily get so excited and, and, and tempted to jump in right then and there right that's not what the professionals do the professionals is now listening to the actual data we're not really focused on jumping into positions right now we're trying to figure out what the overall sentiment is going to be so that we can now figure out maybe some short-term mid-term even long-term strength or weaknesses in these markets that's what we do right so yeah tomorrow you know we might be able to actually do that you know go ahead jump on uh watch the jackson Hole symposium ourselves like actually watch it together it's going to be probably very very boring be honest with y'all right actually sitting there and trying to trying to dissect it um so, but who knows you know we, we, we might be able to really get a lot of nuggets and gems on you know uh, what the fed is planning on doing moving forward you know what's their course of action right because the one thing i keep saying guys and i'm gonna forever continue to say it right i'm gonna continue to say it forever please write this down this is important especially if you're newer to the streams right very important okay sentiment is what controls the market sentiment is what controls long-term flow of this market your ability to identify what the sentiment is is going to change the game for you right now we are in a hawkish environment right a hawkish environment is when the fed is expected to continue to raise interest rates right when there is interest rate hikes that are continuously being expected then the markets are going to react in a very very similar way every single time okay so since we are now experiencing again a hawkish environment where we have a hawkish you know committee that's you know already telling us that they're going to continue raising rates then we have to be ready to play that okay long term that's the overall flow 
Now, again, depending on what Jerome says tomorrow, right? Because tomorrow he's going to talk about inflation. They're probably going to talk about interest rates and, and their plans and all that stuff. If he starts to say things like they're going to stop raising rates or if anything along those lines of him saying that they're going to stop or tremendously slow down by how much they're raising rates, then we're going to have to go to a more of a risk on sentiment. Right. News like that, that they're going to stop raising rates is very bullish for a lot of these markets. Right. A lot of these asset markets, the equity markets. OK, but I'm doubting he's going to say that. Right. The one thing he's probably in, they're going to say is that he's, he said that they're going to probably going to continue just raising rates. That's the plan. They're going to stick with the plan to continue raising rates, but they're probably going to start to reduce by how much they're actually raising it. Now, again, all this confidence, guys, by the way, is literally coming just from the last CPI report, right? Because it finally shown inflation did turn down a little bit. Now, again, I might be by myself here, right? But I still think inflation is nowhere near done, right? I do not think that we actually peaked at inflation whatsoever, right? I don't think so at all. I really don't, right? So even though we did see a little downtick last reading, and that's what's really giving you know the Fed a lot of confidence and a lot of hope, tied that with obviously you know again a good jobs market. Um, I think it's more so setting up for 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 a trap in my opinion, right? So it's going to be very interesting to see what he says, though. You know, again, he's going to be talking very optimistic in my opinion, just because of you know the data, but. Don't fall. In my opinion, just be very careful, right? Be very careful. I think inflation is nowhere near done. I think it's definitely going to continue. Um, so the Fed is going to continue have to, you know, pretty much react and and do their thing, right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's see. Um, shout out to you guys out there in Be More, Louisville, Kentucky. I see y'all, L.A., London, Southside, Chicago, Kenya. I appreciate you guys as well for jumping in with us today. Definitely means a lot to me for uh, you guys to show up. All right, so let's see. Absolutely, please. How can we watch it live? I mean, I'm going to try to just find a link tomorrow morning, to be honest with you. All right, I'm just going to Google it um, and see if I can find a link somewhere. It might be right on Bloomberg TV, hopefully, or something like that. So it's very easy to actually go ahead and get to. Uh, but, yeah, that's what I'm going to be looking for. All right, so uh, let's see. I agree inflation is going to increase. That's my opinion. All right, let's see. Still with being waited to VIP Telegram chat. Reach out to you on Instagram. Uh, send me another message though, cause I don't know. I'm I be trying to go through all my messages, but I must be missing some, right? But resend me another message. Make sure you're sending it to the correct Abel Melendez. Unfortunately, there are a lot of fake pages out there of me. Unfortunately, all right. Um, but make sure you're sending it to to my real one, right? Again, it's literally right below my picture, my actual one. You know, so please use that one. All right, let's see. There's a rumor that there was a leak that Jay Powell was going to talk about continuing to raise rates. I mean, that's that's pretty much what their plan already was. I don't think that's a leak per se. Um, that's pretty much been their plan since last meeting that they're going to continue to raise rates overall. And that's been the main goal. It's just been a matter of about by how much. Right. Because, again, the, you got to think about it, guys. Right now, inflation's at nine percent still. Right. Well, eight point five percent. The goal for the Federal Reserve is around two, two point five, three percent. OK, think about this, guys. Right. The goal for the Federal Reserve for inflation. Right. Which, again, one of their main objectives is to have stable pricing. Right now, we don't have stable pricing because pricing has been increasing tremendously. So their goal of maintaining stable prices is to keep inflation around two and a half percent. So we still have a long ways to go right before we're back to that two and a half percent level. So, again, right now, I still think inflation is not nowhere done. But even when we do finally plateau, right, it's still going to take some time for us to get back down to that two and a half percent level. So I think we are going to continue to see, you know, higher inflation levels overall, guys. Right. I mean, easily, in my opinion, probably probably for the next rest of this year, definitely going into next year, we're probably going to be. And this, again, I'm not no professional. Right. So I, I, this is literally all just my opinion based off me doing my own research and collecting my own data on these on these topics. Right. So, again, I, I truly think that it's still it's still not going nowhere. And as long as, you know, they have to continue to raise rates to try to get inflation back to that two percent, the market is going to do the same exact thing it's been doing. 
right risk off sentiment for the win right risk off sentiment for the win all right that's literally what it comes down to guys right so literally how i've been playing it and that's exactly how i've probably been having my best trading year by far um this year right all because now i'm literally aligning myself with what i believe the big boys are going to do because now i'm trying to think like them from a sentiment perspective if that's if there's a nugget that i could give you guys family right really start to approach these markets and think like the institutions right but when i say think like the institutions i'm not talking about like everybody else tells you guys to, to think like the banks right where they're telling you man look for these levels of liquidity look for these imbalances right these i'm not saying that what i'm telling you guys to do is i'm telling you guys to start to think like a big institution like a big boy a big bank right smart money from a fundamental and a sentimental perspective because when you start to think like them from a fundamental and a sentimental perspective when you get to the actual technical part and you start to think like them from that aspect it's gonna it's, there's gonna be so many aha moments it's gonna be absolutely insane right your confidence in taking these opportunities these setups is going to be through the roof now because now you're just aligning the pieces of the puzzle and when you align the pieces of the puzzle you accomplish a lot of amazing things all right so definitely just you know think about that for sure as well all right so i see charleston in the building what's going on free zone lou what's up what's up i appreciate you tuning in we got vancouver canada as well smash up the likes and let's get our man able to 20k i appreciate you george definitely means a lot to me guys definitely if you have gotten some type of value so far you know the one thing i could just ask as a favor is to go ahead and just smash the like button for me um only do it though if you have actually gotten value if you have not gotten no value just yet, then don't i don't want your like keep your like right now right keep it i don't want your like okay i i, I want your like when i earn your like okay so please definitely go ahead and smash that like button guys it really does help me actually go ahead and uh grow this channel because i really do want to become one of the best one of the number one youtube channels regarding around forex in this entire space right so i definitely appreciate y'all all right so let's go ahead and get into the markets guys so like i said you know the, the, the dollar itself is at very interesting levels um there is still a chance for the market to do something like this but you know this price action itself guys is just really uh really interesting right um, but let's go ahead and see what we got here in the markets, guys. Right? Let's start actually taking a look with gold. Uh, I see a few of you guys ended up sending uh, or wanted me to take a look at gold. So we can take a look at gold really, really quickly. And I see what we got here, guys. So overall, guys, gold pretty much uh, is starting to retrace a little bit. You know, again, we are here on the daily time frame. Uh, we did see a nice little sell off here overall for gold last week. You know, we did start to see a nice little pullback. Uh, but i definitely guys think that we could see lower pricing here for gold right now i don't think we're going to be selling off just yet personally um i still think we do have a chance to possibly come up to um i would say yeah maybe around this level right i, I would like to see gold around this 1770s level and then from that 1770 um i would like to go ahead and look for uh an opportunity to really go ahead and uh yes yeah, so sell gold guys right so i'm really liking that 1770 level for gold uh for possible shorts um so if we can go ahead and really get that then that would be absolutely amazing right but again that's just my blueprint right so i want to still see higher pricing overall is still my goal so then we can again eventually go ahead and sell off you know because we're still i mean we're still a little decent ways away guys from that 1770 level right so um overall yeah you know looking for an opportunity to possibly go higher just because it's a short-term play might not be a bad bet right maybe somewhere where price is at now right like where we're currently at around right now right so something like this is something that could really actually play out right even something like what we're experiencing right now right target right back up to this level um i would really like to enter, enter realistically down here at these lows for gold I mean even down here is probably a little bit more juice here right so if we can make our way back down here guys before we get to that 1770 right my ultimate goal is to see price up to 1770 right that's my ultimate goal okay but if we can see price to come down to here first 1737 i would love to go ahead and buy gold all the way up to that 1770s okay that's really where i would like to buy um gold from 
now besides that though if price doesn't give us that deeper pullback just yet and we just start flying from these levels right here that's fine all right i want to actually start to sell uh, the 1770s we're going to start keeping my eye on but really around maybe 1775 is where i would really like to look for some shorting opportunity here for gold as well right so very simple i i, I mean we might have an opportunity to play both ways in my opinion right we can go ahead and possibly you know um that 1737 level looks very attractive for the buy opportunity you know we could probably buy it up to around 1770 uh and then look to short it around 1775s i think that that can really be uh some good opportunities here for gold um you know uh, so that's how i'm gonna be looking up at it i'm gonna be playing it just like that guys keeping my eyes on it seeing what the market ultimately ends up doing uh taking some trades on it managing my risk and uh pretty much just dealing with the outcome that's literally the blueprint for every single trade right you mark it up you you know you figure out your analysis from every perspective you you mark up the trade you take the trade you deal with the um entirety of the trade you know the, the length of it being open and then you just deal with the consequences the big thing that most people struggle with is dealing with the consequences right when it comes to dealing with the consequences you know newer traders struggle with doing that because they make you know they're so emotionally involved with what the trade is actually doing itself you know that's why it's so important guys to be able to remove these emotions immediately so that you are not getting emotionally involved right and you can actually do what you do all right so let's see what else we got here i just entered 1752 and got out uh 1755 okay what's up andrew what's going on my brother andrew from jacksonville i see you my brother i appreciate you for rocking with me today all right let's see 20 pip you know the vibes man good to see you in the chat let's see can you look at pesos right you want to see the dollar peso sure let's go take a look at dollar peso real quick right and then we'll take a look at the rest of uh the pairs that i like to actually analyze all right so dollar peso as a whole let's see very interesting price action no it's not this is very disgusting price action all right so since 2020 guys the dollar has really not done much against the peso right we have been literally very very choppy literally for the past two years but if you're really being honest with this i mean we're, we have been very choppy going all the way back to 2016 right we had been very choppy one magical run big pullback and now we're magically choppy once again all right so again this is this is these are just the type of market conditions guys that i really don't have no interest in trading whatsoever um it just is not attractive to me whatsoever at all it's just super choppy but if i was to create a bias here on dollar peso i would probably be looking for an opportunity to buy right here off of this level down here right from this demand level right so if because right now we are seeing some selling pressure right you know with this pull back and so if we can see price come down and see here around this 19.75 level you know we can start to look for higher pricing for dollar peso right um but again i don't really trade this you know but that's just my general opinion on how i would have played played it and traded it if i was interested i'm not doing anything uh until we're down here or unless you know we're seeing the pullback just to sell off right you could maybe go because we are on the daily time frame so you could go to smaller time frames and possibly ride the move but the bigger move here that i really is just this buy off of down here all right however we get down there you know it is what it is you can you could you could probably uh, uh take advantage of but overall that's the bigger picture move that i'll be looking for all right now let's go ahead and see now guys and go through a few of these different pairs and see what's really going on right so big shout out to samuel i appreciate you for actually subscribing right thank you thank you thank you hopefully you subscribe because you were getting some value all right let's go ahead and take a look at the markets guys and see what we got here right so aud usd all right we're gonna take a look at euro usd as well uh, but aud usd guys is very interesting right now setting up very nicely um i'm very uh interested in seeing this thing actually giving us a possible reaction guys from where we're currently uh testing right but the only thing that i'm really considering here is because again if i'm expecting a pullback on the dollar all right then that means there's a chance for aud usd to pull back as well to the upside right which is again a big reason why i analyze the dollar itself guys because it is the currency reserve of the world and yeah if i could figure out what that's going to do then it gives me an idea what i could do here 
right so if i'm expecting a pullback on the dollar then we can see a pullback on aud usd now aud usd has already pulled back a little bit um but is it enough right so now i'm just going i'm just looking at what price action is doing now all right i'm just looking at how price action is playing let's see interesting right so i could definitely see us probably coming all the way back up to these highs for sure all right but right now guys like the one opportunity that i could see for aud usd is probably just going to be looking for this buy right if we can see price come back come on give me the tool right see so if we can see price come back down into this level right here then that might be a good opportunity to go ahead and look for some uh some buys here on aud usd right probably somewhere around the 0 0.693 level right this is a very attractive move too you know and then just target right up to this high right yeah again we could experience a deeper pullback because again i am expecting expecting a deeper correction possibly on the dollar um um, and if that happens, then yeah, we're definitely going to see that. But overall, you know, this is just a nice little simple trade right here. Literally a nice little simple trade, right? See if price can come down to here, you know, stop loss below the lows, target right back on up to these highs. So, again, that's what I'll be looking for for more of an intraday opportunity here, guys, on AUD USD, right? It is, I mean, it doesn't doesn't look too bad. I'm going to be honest with you guys, right? It doesn't look too bad. Um, It, it does look very, very achievable. I think that the probability is uh, high for this move to occur. So I would definitely risk 2% on this opportunity and just deal with the consequences. All right. But that's what I'll be looking for for AUD USD. You know, something like this. Boom. And then, you know, send us higher. All right. So uh, I'm actually going to keep this one on my radar as well. All right. Because I might end up taking this one. Uh, let's see gold goes up euro usd goes down uh n not necessarily um especially lately euro usd been going down and gold been going down with it all right so lately they actually been pretty much moving not identical but they've been definitely moving very similarly all right uh let's see able if you have time can you do swiss yen uh cad yen yeah i got you so odd yen Nas, GBP Swiss, you guys have a lot of recommendations. I got y'all. All right, so let's go ahead and start going in order with this, guys. Right, so again, AUD USD looks very good. Um, again, I could go through all of these, but again, nothing really has changed. You know, it's all literally looking very, very similar um, across the board from what we've been talking about this entire week. Like literally, no real changes whatsoever. Um, so let's just continue sticking with what we are pretty much been sticking with. Right, like again, nothing has changed, so there's no reason for us to change it either. Um, now, GJ, uh, we spoke about GJ as well. Uh, this is the one opportunity that I said earlier that I was actually in. All right, because this is the area that I just, um, I, again, we marked it off yesterday. You know, it looked good. Uh, so that did end up taking an opportunity here earlier. Uh, but it's the only one that I'm actually in right now. Like the only opportunity that I'm actually currently in. Right, just, you know, me, full transparency, the only trade that I'm actually in right now is this one. Um, so we'll see what happens with this. Again, I am. Um, expecting higher pricing um, I really think that we could see a, a very strong breakout here for GJ back to the upside so um, that's what I like you know I like the opportunity to see this thing go higher all right so we'll see this one happen we'll see what happens with this one guys overall but yeah you know I like that I like it I like it I like it it's setting up nicely you know we are starting to see a pick pick up so we'll see how that one ends up going uh, but yeah you know I'm higher pricing here for GJ guys I, I want to see higher pricing all right, let's see what we got here. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. So let's take a look at odd yen. All right, so odd yen, guys. So we spoke about this yesterday as well. Um, I said that I wanted to see price come down to here and give us an opportunity to buy down here at these levels. Um, obviously, just like everything else, has been very, very choppy this entire week. A lot of these pairs have been. Um, and this one is no different. You know, we did where, you know, experience the last 24 hours of a very choppy, choppy market. Um, but overall, it still hasn't changed. You know, if we can actually see price come down to here, then I would really like to go ahead and, and still buy this thing, right? But since odd yen is not a pair that I normally trade, that's the only way that I would be looking for an opportunity to get into this, right? If we actually do see some type of a pullback back into this level, then I might consider actually going ahead and get involved, all right? So over the, overall, if it's not that, then I'm just chilling. You know, I wouldn't be trading this pair. Um, but yeah, that's all yen overall. You know, I want to buy it from down here around 94.5. All 
All right, let's see what we got here. Naz 100, right? Let's go take a look at Dirty Naz and see what Dirty Dirty Naz is doing. All right, so overall, you know, the indice market, guys, actually, you know, uh, gained some strength overall to start off the morning in the afternoon. You know, um, but I think it's just a pullback that is pretty much going to eventually get uh, faded away, right? Because I think that we are now coming into an opportunity, guys, where we could start to see you know lower pricing here for nas right not just nas but a lot of these indices uh just again for me personally I, and this is just my opinion but I, I think we do see more lower pricing here for for nas for sure right so setting looking up for the sell opportunity uh long term is not a bad bet um i would be looking to actually i would consider looking to short this probably around uh around the 13.3 level 13,300 uh, looks like a nice level to possibly look for some shorts from so maybe if uh, You know price can make its way all the way up here. Then that would be uh, That would be nice All right, that would be nice. But again, I, I, I like to create the blueprint first in a bigger perspective Right, so I like now in order for this to play out. What do we need? We need price to actually increase right now Is there a way or an opportunity for us to get involved? That will actually get us up into that level Right now, again, this is, I recommend always just stick with the trend overall, right? Counter trend trading is a little bit risky, but it is very possible to do it, right? So again, I'm showing you guys how to do it. So if overall, this is my picture, right? I really want to sell it from up here. I still have to go up there. We have a little bit of ways to go. So what we can do is set up the opportunity to go bullish, right? To buy all the way up. So now... What do we do? Do we buy it from right where price is currently at? Of course not, right? This move already jumped. We'll have to wait for a pullback. And then we can possibly go ahead and jump in to ride it up to this level. Okay, now where could we expect a pullback from? Well, let's actually look at every last strong impulsive move, right? We can start with this one right here, right? Strong impulse. What happened after the strong impulse? We did end up correcting that move. So that's good, right? We had another strong impulse. We ended up coming all the way back down and end up correcting this move. That's a strong push. That's good, right? We just experienced another strong push up. So similar concept, right? We want to see price come all the way back down, possibly right down to this level right here around the 13,000 level. And then from there, that's an opportunity to buy us all the way up to that 13.34 level that I was talking about earlier. All right. So, again, short term, this could be an opportunity. Buy it off of there. Long term, I still want to see, you know, uh, lower pricing here for, you know, NAS. OK, so that's literally how we would play this and how I would consider playing this. And I actually have been trading indices a lot more, um, especially this year. I definitely started picking it up a lot, a lot more. You know, so this is something I'm probably going to end up looking forward to uh, probably in the morning, right? Hopefully by, you know, um, again, we do got to be mindful, guys, with this whole Jackson Symposium thing, right? Symposium thing. Markets are going to be extremely volatile. But, yeah, you know, if we can make our way back down to here, I think we could, like, look for a nice opportunity to bounce right back up. All right, so that's Naz, dirty, dirty Naz. All right, let me go ahead and just answer a few of these questions. Uh, let's see, another question. I've seen a dollar as, like, number nine on the currency value list. So with other currencies worth more than the dollar, what makes the dollar so powerful, right? It's because the dollar itself is, you know, the major one, right? Um, you got to think about it, right? You know, the Forex market is the transition. Is the Forex market is doing what, right? It is the exchange of currency. Now, say I wanted to buy something from a different country, right, man? Instead of me trying to give you guys a whole techno answer, right? The very short and simple thing is that literally the dollar is so powerful because 70 percent of all transactions in the entire world occur using the u.s dollar right that's why because it's the most commonly used one right so if i wanted to buy something across the seas or or if somebody you know in, in turkey wanted to buy something in mexico right like they say they wanted to buy cattle in mexico they're gonna have to convert their money into u.s dollar to actually make that transaction occur right so the dependency on the u.s dollar as it being the currency reserve of the world that is what makes it so strong right now and so powerful and why it has so much weight right it's because of those things 
so that's just something to really uh understand for sure when you understand that then yeah you understand you know the power of it let's see if the stock market crash how do you think the fed's going to approach the situation because i mean they are basically trapped the next four months going to be tough situation fed will always make the top one percent richer and save them um i mean i mean there's only a few things that the fed can do to pretty much you know rebound after a crash you know obviously stimulate the economy is going to be the first thing you know actually start to make make it possible for people to access more money you know so people can pay their bills right when people start paying their bills and a lot of these businesses and corporations start to see a lot more income come back in right that they had just previously lost because of the downturn right so a stimulation of the economy itself is usually going to be the first thing um the next thing is they're definitely going to probably start to lower rates again right obviously with lowering rates you know that more so promotes you know for people to actually go ahead and start borrowing right because lower rates makes you know borrowing and you know the cost of money a lot more affordable all right so they'll probably end up starting lowering rates once again right it's, i mean they're gonna have no choice to if, if the market really just tanks crazy they're gonna have no choice but to start to lower rates to try to combat that all right now the next thing is again have to do with their balance sheet right they can go back to the process of quantitative easing right where they are starting to uh purchase mortgage-backed securities right purchase all these different you know government bonds to try to stimulate the economy that way right so you know, there's a bunch of little different monetary policy tricks that they can go ahead and implement um in case of a you know crazy crazy market crash and i think those are things that are probably gonna eventually happen if i'm being honest because like i said i don't think the worst has even come yet you know with the state of these economies overall i really don't think it right but yeah no the fed is trapped guys right there was actually um a picture that i sent out um that was actually very telling right let me see if i can actually find this picture real quick because uh, it pretty much just it talked about like the situation that the federal reserve is currently in right now and how tough of a situation they're truly in all right because again you're talking about you know either um fighting inflation and getting inflation under control or trying to save your economy right and keeping us out of a recession all right like those are the only two options right it's either they can you know combat inflation and get inflation lower you know make the cost of goods lower again or save us from going into a recession now the only crappy thing about this situation is that in order to solve one of the other things you literally have to pretty much like they're literally going against each other right really think about this guys in order to fight inflation what do we need to occur we need to see less spending less demand right we need to see less demand show up across the board right that's just what it is right so if we want to fight inflation if we want numbers to go lower if we want the price of goods to start to decrease we need to people we need to demand for all these goods and services to decrease tremendously that's just the reality but if the demand for a lot of you know these things that we utilize right all these goods and services that we utilize starts to drop that is exactly going to send us into a recession okay literally it's going to i mean a slowdown in the economy is going is, is sending us into a recession so again the federal was the federal reserve's job guys is not easy right jerome powell's job is not easy and they're pretty much in like a lose-lose situation right now where they're gonna get the blame for this entire thing literally okay so yeah very interesting times man btc mommy i appreciate you for the 199 thank you so much for the dollar and i appreciate you so much thank you thank you thank you if you do have anything any pairs that you want me to analyze for you please let me know i got you i'll take a look at any chart no matter what i appreciate you for uh supporting the channel definitely means a lot right but again jerome powell guys has a very tough job it's either battle inflation which is their main goal right now or keep us out of a recession right you can't you can't save both at the same time it's, it's impossible to save both right it's like they're like polar office opposites right like literally like the polar opposites it's very hard to do both of them all right but overall yeah, that's where we're at all right so let me go back to these these pairs and let's see gbp swiss right so let's take a look at gbp swiss um see what we got here so overall this pair has just been absolutely dropping been tanking uh for the past week you know we are seeing a little rebound in this market um but overall this market has still been tanking guys and i think that we could realistically still continue to sell um sell off here for gj 
um, but I would be interested in shorting, you know, somewhere up at these levels, these higher levels up here. Right, this is where I would be interested in shorting from. All right, so yeah, you know, we're probably going to see a nice spike up in the markets, but I would be interested in shorting from up there. All right, this is actually not a bad looking opportunity, neither here, guys, on pound Swiss. Right, so something like this is probably not a bad idea. Very simple, straight to the point. Um, you know, staying with the downtrend, uh, identify the nice area of supply. And then we short the supply zone and target back down to the lows. All right, straight to the point there for GBP Swiss. Right now, AUD USD, we pretty much already went it and went over it. Um, I would really like to just uh, see if we can catch some possible buys on AUD USD around the 0 0.69 level. Okay, I would like to see some short-term buys around 0 0.693, and then target right back up into the supply zone up here. You know, we're going to go ahead and get out at the supply zone and then uh, just let the market do what it does. All right. So that's AUD USD as well. Right. Let's go take a look at NZD USD. That's going to be probably very similar, just like with uh, AUD USD. Um, but let's see what we got here, guys. So overall, you know, this thing is still very much bearish. You know, we've seen a nice big spike up in the market that got completely erased, you know, and now we're pretty much testing a very significant level. Um, I don't know. This one actually seems like this could realistically be ready to go very, very soon. Right. So NZD USD, I'm probably going to be, you know, um, expecting some more downside right from these levels. Now, the only way I will be expecting more so if a, a move higher, if price ends up breaking this level right here of structure that we're testing right now. Right. This whole little 0 0.625 level. Right. A break above that is going to trigger higher pricing. But we've been staying below that level. And I, and I think as long as we do stay below that level, then we can realistically see lower pricing here. All right. Now, again, we are at a, it is 11 o'clock, right? We are in the middle of Sydney session, you know, so this pair is going to be one of those pairs that is going to be active during this trading session, you know, so, you know, you, you never know if the market does come back up to these levels, you know, that could be a nice opportunity to go ahead and uh, potentially get involved, right? Just because again, you know, price action that we've been seeing, you know, is, is really, you know, staying below this level. And um, I think there's a chance that we do continue to stay below it and uh, actually go ahead and start to go lower. All right, so yeah, you know, a little pull back up can trigger some more selling off here, guys, for NZD USD. Yeah, yeah, that's what I would look for for that. Not bad. All right, see, CAD yen. All right, did I do CAD yen already? I think I did do CAD yen. Oh, let's look at it. All right, so CAD yen, um, very choppy pair again as well just like a lot of these other ones you know a lot of these yen pairs guys have been very choppy over the past month or so i'm literally just been going sideways um, but overall you know uh, let's see what we can find here on the smaller time frames uh, so we do have a nice little strong area of supply all the way up there all right all right I really like this level up here, guys. So I would like to sell around the 106 point, uh, I would say the 106.3 level, right, for CAD yen. I think we're going to see just price continually make its way higher, you know, took its way higher. But up here, guys, around this, you know, 106.3, 106.5 level in this range, that's a very, very juicy level right there and a good opportunity for us to potentially short here on CAD yen uh, just to get us a little bit more of a, you know, a little pullback back down. Um, from that level but i like that level right there 105.3 uh, 105.4 around that range i would definitely be looking to go ahead and short uh cad yen guys right if i was actually looking to trade this one now again this is just another one of those pairs i don't actually normally trade i don't i can't remember the last time i placed a trade on cad yen but um that's how i will be playing it you know playing off of this supply zone again i'm a very big structure uh trader but i'm also very big in supply and demand structure based trading right so yeah, if I want to look for the trade, it's going to be right back up at a level of supply. That makes sense, right? So, yeah, you know, a move up here is, is really going to be a, a, a nice setup to go lower. Now, if we go to lower time frame, is there a way for us to buy it to get up to that level? Well, we could possibly look for a little reaction off of this little short demand right here, right? We've seen a little nice little demand pick up from this level. So if price does come back down to this level, down to the zone over here um there is a chance for price to uh, uh find some demand again 
right so i like this zone right up in here right around the 105.3 you could say I, I i like that opportunity to go bullish again off of that all right so that's probably the most recent trade that we could look for is probably going to look for uh this sell off to then go ahead and try to look for that buy up um, but overall we're going to be looking to short this thing long term overall once we get up here we're going to be shorting long term just intraday you could probably look for the buy to get up there all right so that's what i'll be looking for it doesn't look too bad though right definitely does look juicy especially here on this one hour you know if we come down into there we can look for you know a nice rebound and continue going higher all right so that's caddy yen all right let's see what else we got here have you watched too big to fail the movie it sounds very similar to what's happening now i have not watched that right but i will actually uh write this down and i will actually go watch it especially if you say that it's very similar to what's happening now so let me go ahead and just write that down right too big to fail all right bet appreciate it right i'll definitely watch that for sure Eric. right what's going on eugene good to see you in the chat right we got george upgraded the super supporter i appreciate you george thank you so much for rocking with me all right let's see well what are some real world consequences that will most likely stem from this recession that we are in like what are some changes in our daily lives that we might experience danny i appreciate you my little bro appreciate you so much for rocking with me bro and uh tuning in all right but uh real world changes right i mean i if i'm being honest i truly think and again i could be biased i could be wrong right but i truly think that this entire you know um transition right this entire um what we're experiencing right now is probably going to be the downfall of you know uh the middle class let's talk about it all right i think that the middle class itself is pretty much going to be no more right we're only going to be we're literally only going to have probably like two different brackets guys right you're either you know uh you're either rich and wealthy right or you're dead poor right and, and and the way and the reason why i'm i'm expecting this right or i'm thinking this is simply because of how everything's going like we're talking about inflation guys that is so high that we don't even know if it's really going to ever come back down right because people are doing more spending now than ever right and, and, and consumer spending plays a major role in inflation right and prices going higher and things like that all right so again it's going to be very tough to try to combat this inflation as a whole um but i truly think that is really going to be the end of the middle class because now you know either the wealthy is going to obviously the rich and wealthy are always going to be able to buy their stuff but the poor because now the price of goods is going to continue to increase the poor is only going to continue to get worse and worse and worse right the worst situation that we have right now guys is inflation rising at a rate of around eight and a half percent right inflation rising eight and a half percent right which means the cost of goods and services has gone up eight and a half percent to nine percent that's what they tell you right realistically it's probably double that the real inflation is probably double that right so just keep that in mind right but we'll go based off what they tell you right so they tell you around eight and a half nine percent now how fast are wages actually going up right how fast is your paycheck right like did any of you guys get a a, a pay raise lately right to keep up with inflation not that i mean some of you guys might have but that's the big situation that we have here that is now going to really change a lot of people from a financial situation right people that are poor are only going to get even more poor borderline homeless and um people that are middle class are going to now start to you know slide into that you know that that situation where they're now living you know extremely paid to the paycheck right and it's because again you know the cost of living is going up but the the you know the pay raise is not following right the pay raise is not helping you'll be surprised guys like how many people right now are working two three four five jobs and that's still not cutting it right like literally so it's things like that is 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 my biggest concern with this next recession right is that you know um because of the overall downturn of the markets because inflation is still out of control it really is causing so many people to experience financial hardships that they never experienced before okay so that's something that again is just is just going to shake the markets 
Uh, let's see. The feds are to blame in the they in cahoots. Yep. Your own pal. Sixty minutes was crazy listening. Now this. Now with this new knowledge, <laughs> it's crazy, right, Oscar? Right. I I used to never actually watch the news. Right. I used to never watch Bloomberg, because uh, obviously I didn't understand them back in the day. Right. But now when I watch it, I'm like, yeah, I know what the hell they're saying. You know, you feel good when you're actually educating yourself, and you can actually pay attention to those things and and understand what's going on. Right. You just feel good about it. Uh, let's see, UJ. Yeah, I can check out UJ for sure. Uh, let's see. Can you explain on gold why you say 1770 is a good level to get in the sell? I'm still learning, so I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, no problem at all, Letty. Um, I could definitely get to uh, go back to gold for sure. Let me check UJ, and I got you. All right, so taking a look at USDJPY, guys. Um, overall, we were looking for price uh, again, very choppy week overall. Um, but I really wanted to see price make its way all the way up to here. Um, because I want to sell it from up here. All right, I think that we could really have a nice opportunity to go ahead and um potentially short uj uh right back lower right because again keep in mind guys my overall bias here is i i i think we're going to experience some short-term bearishness for the dollar uh which is going to cause this to go lower i think we could see price for uj at least come down to around the 135 level so that shorting opportunity i'm talking about is only to target right down to around the 135 right because then from there this thing is still on a on a on a on a, on a one-way destination with some detours to the moon okay so i still think that this thing is absolutely going to continue flying continue skyrocketing overall um but i think we can experience a pullback first right so i would like to you know sell it from up here all the way down to here okay sell it from up here to down there up here to down there Right, so that's what I would be interested for you, Jay, guys, going into tonight. That just seems like the most logical um, opportunity here, I think, that I would say. Right, for USDJPY for sure. All right, so yeah, it doesn't look too bad, neither. All right, let's go take a look at that gold now. All right, so the 1770 level, the reason why I'm interested in the 1770, uh, 1770 level is I'm more so just looking at structure to the left. When I'm looking at this little pullback higher, right? we have various levels of structure in this pullback right here on the daily actually let me go ahead and uh draw like this right so we have this level of support that was created right that is now being utilized as current resistance but we also have again this level right here of structure and we can also even consider all the way up here at these highs right so each of these levels are levels of structure right that realistically price can react off of either of those and continue bearish right because overall we we have been you know bearish this entire year all right so i'm still expecting that you know especially how we just seen this massive sell-off right back below the moving average showing a lot of momentum yeah i like to sell off it's just a matter of identifying now which level price is actually going to react from now we are on a daily keep in mind all right so the reason why i like the 1770 is just because of the confluence that it gives me with the moving average Right, the moving average confluence is like that one little thing that just gives me, you know, that's that's what I that's what I like about it, right? It just it separates itself from these ones. Now, again, price can realistically play off of either or though. Right? You want to be careful with that. Or, or not careful, but you do want to just be mindful of that. But I, I just like the 1770 because it does give me that uh little bit of extra confluence with the moving average there on the daily. Right? So that's literally it. You know, just that extra little confluence really is what, what it did for me. Let's see. Um, the student debt forgiveness is good for them, but it's the stimulus all over again. Just going to hurt us. Yeah, no, you're 100 percent right, Matthew. And again, you know, this whole thing now, which is literally all over my social media. I'm pretty sure you guys all had the same situation, right? Where all today, all you talked about on Facebook and on Instagram and not even on and mainly on Facebook, right? Was all about this damn student loan, right? And everybody crying and complaining about it. Or supporting it I, whatever the case may be right i don't care about how people take it what i'm caring about is what this is going to do to our currency market right and yeah guys this is again now them literally eliminating removing ten thousand dollars from everybody that earned i believe less than 125k right that currently earns less than 125k right and they're also taking away 20000 for anybody that had a Pell Grant. I think it's called a Pell Grant. Right? But you got to think about it. 
these businesses, these companies, guys, that are the ones that are actually giving out these loans, they still want their money. Like the gov- like the government can say, yeah, you're going to have to cancel $10,000. But guess what? These companies that, that took out these loans, that gave you the loans, they're still going to want to get paid. So the Federal Reserve, or, or not the Federal Reserve, but the government is still going to have to pay these people. Yeah, we... Or whoever has them, I ended up paying. You know, it was crazy for me. The only reason why I, my student loans are paid off for one, <laughs> they weren't much. Right, I went to a community college, right, so it wasn't much at all. Um, but the reason why mine actually is paid off because um, I actually ended up getting my my wages garnered, right? Like they legit was literally just took it from my paycheck because I just never ended up paying it, right? But they ended up was taking so much money from my paycheck every single week. It was literally about two, three hundred dollars a week a week that they were putting towards my student loan so i ended up paying it off by default just because i was kind of forced right but um that's why i don't have them but yeah you know it's um it's crazy times guys right very crazy times um but yeah you know this is definitely going to affect you know a lot of people guys overall you know this whole you know uh college thing yeah you know shout out to everybody that's going to be able to pretty much remove ten thousand dollars worth of debt that's amazing for y'all but it's still gonna hurt y'all right now the cost of goods is probably inflation is still gonna stay high right if we have to continue to print money for whatever reason it's going to continue to send the markets high right big shout out to our newest subscribers i appreciate you guys for rocking with us tonight thank you thank you so much hopefully you guys are here because you guys were getting some value so far right but yeah guys this whole situation with again the you know this whole student loan thing yes it is going to cause the government to have to pay these you know these uh lenders which means they're gonna have to print money the more money that we continue to print is not going to help fight inflation so we're going to see that as well or the cause of them doing this the decision that they made we're going to eventually see it sometime in the future the effects of that okay let's see um that's my why to help people overall i like that why I see my job gave staff a raise beginning September 2nd. That's amazing, Lachelle, man. I hope you guys got a nice raise. All right, see, gold looks like an inverted teacup. All right, gold, yeah, yeah, it really could be a nice little inverted tea. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. All right, we got the little start of the teacup, the little move all the way back down from right here is where we normally should see the handle, though. Uh, yeah, you know, it wasn't bad. Do you trade silver? Uh, not necessarily. Right, I don't trade silver. I don't think I've ever traded silver. To be honest with you, right? So the answer is just not necessarily. The answer is no. <laughs> I have never traded uh, silver. All right, let's take a look at oil for sure. All right, so oil guys doing pretty much what we said, right? I told you guys yesterday I wanted to see this thing pull back. Uh, we did actually start to pull back. Um, so now if we can come down to around these levels around 91, 92, um, I like to look for bullish reactions from these levels right to go ahead and really send us higher um because i'm bullish oil um i think personally uh we could see this thing start to increase right so yeah you know i like i like to buy um uh, oil around 92 level around a 92 level all right um but besides that family i do appreciate you guys once again right if there's no more questions comments or concerns uh, I do appreciate you guys for jumping on. You know, without y'all, I would not be able to do this. I truly, truly mean that. You know, I look forward to continue giving you guys massive, massive value on these live streams. And I look forward to actually giving you guys access to this new platform that I'm launching as well. All right. That is going to absolutely change the game overall. So, family, I appreciate you guys. You guys are absolutely amazing. Um, again, I do do these calls, guys, every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at the same time, same place. For every single one of you guys um for all of my inner circle familia you know uh, i appreciate you guys so much for rocking with me for supporting me and i look forward to uh just continue giving you guys more value as well in the inner circle chats right so i appreciate you guys family i love you guys thank you guys for everything and i will see you guys all on sunday for my weekly outlook video have a great rest of your guys' night for me love y'all let's get it